Like hot or what's up? Mm -hmm. You're trained to to fix a problem. Not only are you trying to stop a bleeder or fix a wound, people want their pets to look cute. Who's a pretty girl? So when we think plastic surgery, humans, we're making the lips fuller. We're we're tightening things up. Our plastic surgery is they come in and they're mauled. Got them pretty good. What we need to do is get these wounds cleaned up. So we're trying to make it look as normal as we can, but the pieces don't really fit. We have to make them fit. And it's almost like you amaze yourself a little bit, but you have to kind of act like you've like done it, it before. Oh, yeah. But inside, you're like, wow, I am amazed, you know? So those are the Ferguson ones Ferguson, you a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Governor. You looking good. Surgery site looks good. Let's bust out this joint. It looks real good. Oh, oh. Good to go. All right. Bye, See you later. Cycling between clients, Dr. Hodges meets an eight-month-old Nigerian dwarf goat who's having a wee bit of trouble. Hey, hey, what's going on, man? So what's going on with this goat? He's falling asleep. He's falling asleep. So your goat friend here been having some problems urinating, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Charlie's a pet Nigerian dwarf goat. I got him when the lockdown happened. I've never had a goat in my life. I just needed company, and goats are very curious. So it's like every time I go outside, I kind of learn something new from the goat. About three weeks ago, I started to notice that he was having trouble urinating. It's like trickling out. So that's when I, I said this could be serious. Does he have a hard time urinating? Is it just he just squats and just? Yeah. So you don't think it's anything he ate or ingested? I want to check the ultrasound and make sure I don't have a stone or, or something floating around in it. Okay. All right, let's go and get a, some urine and do an ultrasound. And let's see what we got going. With this trick of urine, it could be a UTI, which is a urinary tract infection, or it could be something a lot more serious like a bladder stone, which is passing through the urethra. So the things that are passed out via urine actually ends up in the bloodstream and the animals become toxic and dies. I'm sitting here reading, and the goat ate my paper. <laughs> you know how a goat eats your homework? <laughs> man, just, I mean, it'll just. You gotta eat your pants now? Hold on now. Hey, will you stop biting? Me? Getting to you in a second. A second? Yeah, you ain't paying attention to him. The last thing I need is a hole in my pants from a goat. I need to take Charlie outside the clinic so that he can get a little bit of fresh air and maybe eat some grass. Charlie, you need to stop. <laughs> because I definitely don't need him eating up everything inside the clinic. Come on over here. It's OK, Charlie. Not being able to pee is not a fun thing, I'm sure. Feels ah! black. Yeah. Ah! Ooh, that sound horrible. Ah! Oh, goodness. Ah! Dr. Hodges reviews the results of Charlie's urine test, measuring for the presence of blood. In a perfect world, it'd be yellow. But we're all the way green, so we're filled with blood. Can we get an ultrasound on the goat? Oftentimes, with blockages, you have to go in and you have to correct the problem surgically. So this is a very, very serious situation. But I'm hoping I can get away with antibiotics and make this baby better. You want the light on? Yeah, turn the light off. So her bladder is here. Damn, like she's still hurt. That's not bad, though. So your bladder looks clear. I don't see anything. Let me see if we can clean this up. Let's get some antibiotics. Good job, Mr. Goat. I don't see any bladder stone, but Charlie definitely has bacteria and blood in his urine and also in the bladder. Hopefully, with antibiotics, we can get rid of it. And he's back to eating grass and just bad and doing his thing. My man, I did an ultrasound, and that looked pretty good. But he has a lot of blood in, it, in his urine. Really? Yeah. Okay. He does have a UTI, which is basically an infected bladder. I'm going to give him a shot. I need one for pain, one antibiotic. I'm very confident that we're going to get this problem fixed. <laughs> It's good to know that it was just a UTI, not kidney stones. I'm just going to monitor him more. I'm learning, so whatever happens with Charlie, he's part of my family, so I'm going to take care of him. Oh, yeah, buddy. Next up's a chicken. You going to be OK, Doc? I'm sure everything will be fine. Hi. How you doing? All right, all right. Look at the baby. Oh. We've got multiple babies in here. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> this Who's is this? Charlotte. It's OK. Oh, I got you. Oh, Charlotte. 
So I brought my chick Charlotte. She is about three weeks old. The only thing we have in our farm are chickens, and she's one of my favorites. We noticed that Charlotte's eye was yucky looking, and she also had a few pet marks on her back. These chickens are my life, so I just want to make sure that everything's OK with her. So what's going on? Somebody pecked her eye. And we think it's the chicken that's in the cage with her, but then okay. she also has a spot on her back. Is the other chick being mean? She might be. OK, all right. So Charlie was a little chicken ruckus, you know. <laughs> we did have another chick that passed away. We think a respiratory infection. Have you seen any different kind of respiration? Any other the baby start sneezing, anything she like that? She and the other baby were sneezing. I want to do a couple things here, OK? We're going to put a stain in that eye to determine if there's a scratch on it. I may also try to get an x-ray. It makes sure as long as everything look good there. Okay. And that's going to determine how we treat this thing as well, OK? OK. All right. Hearing that this chick has been attacked, but it also has respiratory infection, so I want to know if their two are associated. But in this case, we won't know anything until we do further diagnostics. We need to take x-rays. Then because we have trauma to the eye, one thing that I don't want to do is what we call a floor scene stain test. You are so cute. Yeah. All right, so see if we can get a little drop of stain here. Once I put the stain in, if there's a scratch, it will collect in that crater. Then it'll fluoresce, and that'll tell me that we have a scratch or an abrasion or something on the cornea. Well, no more than one drop went there. Well, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it, buddy? I'm so sorry. All right, so now we're going to flip the light off and see if we got something going on here, Jordan. It's OK. I think it's collecting around the bottom, but I don't see on the eye itself. So as I look at the stain, there's no uptake on the eye, but I do see some conjunctivitis, which makes me think that this may be associated with the respiratory disease. You think she's infected now? Yeah, we definitely got to put medicine in there, yeah. Let's see if we can get an x-ray. Hey, so you're not scared of them when they're this small, Doc? Oh, no, they can't hurt me now. <laughs> when they get older, they get bad and mean. So my fear of chicken stemmed from when I was young. I was pecked by a chicken when I was little, and ever since then, it's been a little touch and go for me. I need to go and get you psyched up while you're young. Always be nice to Dr. Ferguson. Get some, get some, get some. Don't be like all the other chicken. She looks like she's legit yeah. listening to you. Okay, thank you, because all the other chickens, they don't like me. Always be nice to Dr. Ferguson. Get some, get some. All right? Okay? Cool, everything good. I think we're seeing eye to eye now. You know, I think this hypnotism is kind of working a little bit. And I actually told him, make sure you tell all your friends to be nice to Dr. Ferguson. No matter what my issues are with chickens, I'm going to do the best I can to take care of all of them, no matter what their ancestor did to me. We're looking at the long areas here. They look nice and dark, so I don't see where there's any pneumonia or anything like that. We look pretty good here. Now we need to address that area on the back. Well, luckily, it's a little trauma out from the other chick. Let's clean that up a little bit. <laughs> A vocal, didn't you? Yeah, it's all right. Good girl. It's OK. You're doing good. This is a proud moment. I'm one with the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so after looking at these wounds, it looks like it probably did come from his sibling. Don't let big brother or sister jump on you anymore. And that's right. Luckily, we're just dealing with conjunctivitis in the eye. We should be back to new in a few days. All right, Mom. There's no scratch or anything on the cornea. But there's definitely a lot of inflammation and conjunctivitis. This area on the back, probably coming from the other baby, kind of being a little tough. We're going to send a general antibiotic home with you, and we're going to send some ointment for the eye. OK. All right, both of them twice a day. Dr. Ferguson hit the nail on the head and did a really good job with us, helped explain things where we could understand it. Don't forget our little talk we had in the back, OK? We're very thankful that he helped us out with Charlotte. You take care of this baby, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a good one, okay? You too. <laughs> Among the ebb and flow of patients is a six-year-old Australian shepherd who got into a bad scuffle. Hey. Hello. How are you? Good. Let's, ooh. So we got in a little dog fight. Let's, let's... Two pits got her. Good boy. My dog's name is Shay. She got attacked by my neighbor's two pit bulldogs. She's very, very smart, very active, loving, wanting to be by my side all the time. She's my shadow. They just came out of nowhere? They got her through the fence. Dance. They had her paw, and then they had her mouth. And I had to literally beat them on the head I'm sure. for a while huh. for them to let go. And I kept thinking in my head, they're not going to let go. They're going to kill her. I think the only reason they let her go is in that flesh tore. Boy. All right, come around, dear. It is all the way down in there? Is yes, there a ma hole there? 
is the hole between is torn all the way down to the jaw. I'm gonna clean it up, just do some fluids, get some pain medicine, and then I'm gonna try to see if I can suture this and get it to hold. But I'm gonna wanna shoot an x-ray also because I can feel a little bit of possibly broken. So I'm gonna make it better. I'm gonna cry now, okay? No, I'm gonna make this better. I'm gonna make it better. It's okay, Shay. We're gonna take it back, Mom, and try to get it cleaned up, okay? Okay. I know he's gonna do his best. The thought that she can't be fixed, it would be devastating. I wish that it had never happened. Can I open? Can I open? I know. All right. The problem, I mean, this whole jaw is literally torn apart. I'm gonna see if we have a, a fracture, which is gonna open up a whole nother can of worms. If this jaw is broken, I would have to somehow plate this jaw together. Trying to keep a moving joint together is very difficult. Also, you gotta think about food. When the dog can eat getting food into the bone, it can give osteomyelitis, which is basically infection in the bone, and that can be fatal. Get my x-rays ready. Let's get it on the table, please. This is about as bad as you can get. If I can't repair this jaw, this dog might not be able to eat. The jaw can get infected, and it's oftentimes fatal. And ultimately, we might not be able to save this dog. All of this is soft tissue that has just been torn away from the body. Shay, the Australian Shepherd, is in x-ray to determine if her jaw is broken. So, just a tinge of good news. Oh, thank you. Just a tinge. The bone of the jaw, luckily, they didn't shred that. Oh, thank you, Lord. But the actual jaw bone itself seems to be intact. Just one look at all. Now, all of this stuff hanging, you see this fluid? That is fluid that's hanging. This is the jaw. Somehow I gotta figure out how to get this to tack back to here and stay. Let me show you in real life what I mean. Come on over. So my issue comes to this is attached here. It's almost like plastic surgery. I gotta get this to stay. But the problem is there's nothing to attach because there's no skin on this side. Oh my God. It's gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. Take good care. Of course. Of care. I got you. I know you are. Yes, ma'am. I'll figure it out. All right, mama. We're going to give you a call to update you after surgery. We got to get this fixed. If I can't get this back together, this dog probably won't survive. So my plan with this surgery is actually to go in and try to find as much healthy tissue as I can, debride it, try to get it to bleed so that I know that it's healthy, and try to reattach it and hope this works. We're gonna see how good you being a plastic surgeon is. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Since there's no actual tissue still left on the bone, I mean, the bone is clean, my plan is to bring the lip up and try to suture it up under the gum line between the teeth and see if I can actually get that to hold. There's no way for me to tie this jaw to that jaw bone. So, so I'm trying to tie it down underneath to give me some support because I'm trying to work with whatever little tissue I have and make some magic. We're doing good, up. I just need one last piece so I can get in here. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think it looks pretty good, Doc, really. I tried to make a gum line, so I started at the bottom, cleaned it, tacked it down, tacked it down here. So hopefully, if this stays and stays tacked, it'll look just like a normal dog. Now, let's see if I can get it to hold. I'm really concerned if it's gonna hold because there could be some dead tissue still, and if there's no blood supply, it's gonna get necrotic and it's gonna fail. I'm just hoping and praying for the best, and in time, we'll see what happens. Oh, 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 she got some snot out. Aww. They brought in Bibble. She's our guinea pig, she's a year and a half old. This morning when I woke up, one of the first things I could hear was her breathing. It was louder and sounded more painful than before, and it was very concerning. You're OK, Bibble. It's OK. Hi. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. So what we got going on here? She had a cough. She was labored breathing earlier. She's been eating OK? Not today. Uh, yeah, not today. This is so not like her. She never stays still like this. So 
First of all, we need to take an x-ray, determine what these lungs look like, and that'll help us determine whether we have a upper respiratory infection or like pneumonia in the lungs. Okay. It can be pretty serious. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so what I want to do first is take an x-ray and see where we are, and then we'll see what our plan is for this. Okay. Okay. All okay. Right. Also, I'd say watch your finger just in case. Oh, she bites to... too? Yes, <laughs> she nibbles. Bibble presented with respiratory issues with breathing. I'm really concerned that we're dealing with something like pneumonia. It can be deadly in these guinea pigs. This is our first x-ray we took. Mm -hmm. So mostly in your lungs, it's mostly air, uh -huh. so it should be dark. We look in this spot here, it looks pretty white up there. So what that tells me, we do have a little pneumonia. So treatment-wise, we do a couple things. One is antibiotics, uh -huh. OK? Two, we're going to go on some anti-inflammatory. With this medication, hopefully make her feel better. If things change and we get worse during this period of time, you need to get back in. Okay. I really feel like with medication, that Bill is going to pull through. We're going to get all this mixed up for you, and we'll come back in in just a second, OK? OK, thank you. Right. We're going to um, mix up. Ooh, ooh. She be bitching. Yes. You're a little biting, a little something. No, ma'am, don't bite. Don't bite. Calm down. No, ma'am, don't do that. Oh, you trying to bite me, man? <laughs> Should've called you nibbler. Luckily, Bibble got in the day. Had it waited a day or two, it may have succumbed to pneumonia. You were right. We like to nibble, don't we? Uh, yeah. I'm back down like, hey. There <laughs> Here you go, bud. All right. Once a day, it goes in the refrigerator, OK? We got our antibiotics here, mama. This is apple and watermelon flavor. Ooh. She said, what did that taste like? All right, let me clean you up there. You can even bite me if you want to. <laughs> now, listen, let me give you some instructions here. You have to get well and feel better today, then a little bit better tomorrow. Then I need you back to full strength. Is that a bet? Is that OK? <laughs> there you go. OK, that's a good. All right. All right. I knew when we were going to walk out, we were going to hear some news about her that we weren't going to want to hear. But I'm hoping we can get her, you know, healthy again. I'll probably be the one that stays up late, make sure that she's still breathing OK. She's kind of delicate right now. And I have to keep an eye on her. I'm going to let you go back to mommy. I'll take care of this baby, OK? Let, keep me posted. If you need us, give us a call, OK? Dr. Hodges and surgery tech Paul are fielding a call from a local university's agricultural research department. So you don't eat fish? Um, I don't really prefer it. I like fish. All kinds of fish. Fish sandwiches, <laughs> fish fish, fish tacos, fish and grits. One of my specialties. I like to cook salmon. Oh, yeah. You know what? I take that back. So I you love, do like it. I love salmon croquette. OK, <laughs> so you make the salmon croquette from the can, right? So you think just because that salmon is in a can, it just come from the fish factory? Yeah. With no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever helps you sleep at night. I got you. Can I, we get some of that canned fish? <laughs> the canned fish. He don't like the real fish. Yeah, the canned. Like canned fish. Can. With, just... with biscuits. Woo. So we're at Fort Valley State University, my alma mater. They called me and they were having a fish problem. I've loved fish since I was a little boy. I actually graduated with a degree in fisheries biology. I'm a fish guy, so I'm here to help them solve that problem. How are you? Good. What's going on? Well, for the past three months, I've been noticing that my tilapia have been dying. I'm a fish assistant at the Fort Valley Aquaculture Center. Right now, we're focusing on breeding tactics for the fish. I put some new tilapia inside of a tank, and I noticed them jumping out, and they have a loss of appetite. So I was wondering if you could figure out what the problem was. OK, let's see what we can do. So I need to make sure that my babies are OK. So hopefully, he could fix the problem. These are my babies. All right. This don't look too bad, but I definitely see them trying to screw up themselves on the bottom and circling around a little erratic. So you got some that died. I got it right over here for you. All right, see it's white in the gills? Mm -hmm. So fish need gills to breathe. Yes. And when they start getting this white proliferation here, Bad news. So what do you think? It's parasites. These things are microscopic. You can't really see it. But I knew it was some kind of parasite. My job is to figure out exactly which one, because of these little boogers are deadly. All right, Paula, I'm going to catch a fresh fish, get a piece of the gills. Uh, go ahead and set me up a wet slide. Yeah, there's slide right here. All right, who's going to be my fish guinea pig? Will it be you? you? All right, so you're going to be my guinea pig. As I let my fish go. They're determined not to get in that net. Oh, boy. No one the fish I want. I got you. All right. He's smarter than the fish. There you go. 
All right, I'm gonna take just a little piece to the gills for my wet prep. Wet preparation is a diagnostic technique where a small tissue sample is taken and checked for signs of specific disease. Oof, this does not look good. Your fish has something called trickle When you have a few, it's okay. But when you got a microscope full, that's a problem. What happens is the parasites attach themselves to the gills. The fish can barely breathe. So this type of parasite become a real heavy burden on the fish, especially when you got a lot. In closed quarters, that parasite can run rampant, and you could just have a pool of dead fish. You got these tanks, and then you have one back here that circulates as well? Yes. These two circulate together, which also connects to all these. So the one fish has it. Pretty sure all these fish has. And if all these fish in here got this, they all might die. This does not look good. Huh, boy. Fort Valley needs these fish for research, so we got to make sure they do OK. Ain't it right, fishy, fishy? Dr. Hodges discovers a deadly parasite at the university's aquatic research facility. We got to get this fixed. Let's go look at the ones in the big tank. So in the big tank, these are also tilapia, and I am sure there are thousands of fish in there. The reason I want to check these guys out is water is in there circulating, so if these guys have triggered in them, we got a real problem. I got to get some of these fish. If you need help, let me know. <laughs> this ain't going to work. You can barely reach the bottom. Maybe I can catch this. You know what? Just get my waders. Oh, here you go, sir. Here you go. Unless you're going to jump in there and grab them. Uh, you got your waders right here. You called me out here. You didn't tell me I had to get in. It's a surprise. I did not plan to go swimming. Look at them. They sweet Well, Dr. Ferguson, when I need it. All right. Who's going to be first? Come on in here. Paul, you ready? Ready to go? Like you ready to be? Where you bucket? You bucket right here. You got the fish? You worried about the bucket? My name is Hodges. Are you ready? I got three. You got three. Now you put the waders on, voila, we have fish. Pretty good at this thing, Doc. I was in school for a long time to learn that. All right, boss. Let's see what we got. Oh, boy, this fish is more covered than other. You see the same thing? Same thing. I was hoping it was just going to be isolated to that one. So with the circulation, all of them got it. So all of them got to be treated, and it's all bad. And these fish probably wouldn't have been with us in the next week or two. I'm going to fix them. As long as my fish are OK. There's our game plan. Formulin is the treatment for trick or dangling. It's a good way to go. Formalin usually works. So you have your sick tank, so you just going to transfer them to those sick tanks. I want you to put some in this one, since it's its own unique circulation, and then we're going to use this one. Treat them, and we're going to get this thing fixed up. These organisms have to live on the fish, so once we get those taken care of, then we can put them back in the main tank. All right. So we got to get this formula action going. All right. I know you hear about formula from out this stuff that we usually put dead tissue in, but I ain't going to kill your fish. Don't worry. <laughs> I trust you. I promise. Formalin is deadly, so you got to use the exact amount of formalin, or you can kill the fish along with the parasite. Get on up here. Come on. Look at step. <laughs> what do I do? So just kind of fill it up. Paul's going to give me my formalin. We put it in, and we're going to treat some fish. How long does it take for the parasites to go away? I would think in the next few days. Formalin does the trick. We're going to get rid of this trigger down. We're going to have these guys ready for research, and Fort Valley going to be straight to the top. It was really scary. I was very concerned, but as soon as he told me he could fix it, I felt much better. I really do appreciate Dr. Hodges. It was glad that he can come in and help me really diagnose it and fix it. Dr. Hodges is the best. Why well, not not want the best for my fish? <laughs> Thank you so all much. All right, no problem at all. Anything. Recently, Dr. Ferguson came to the aid of Charlotte, the silky chicken. There's definitely a lot of inflammation and conjunctivitis. We're going to send a general antibody home with you, and we're going to send some ointment for the eyes. Now, after a little home care and a lot of TLC, this hen can see the world clearly again. Charlotte is doing wonderful. We love her so much. She has recovered fully now. Her eye looks much better, and she's grown a lot since we took her to perfection. Her feathers are growing back. If we wouldn't have gotten her on antibiotics like we did, probably wouldn't have made it. And we really love her. 
we're so thankful for what Dr. Ferguson did for us. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson and Carter Ferguson for fixing her eye and making her feel all better. So all our vitals and all our, as far as infection, we look good. But it's always a but, right? Dr. Hodges is on the phone with Shay, the Australian Shepherd's owner, to give an update on the post-surgery status of her dog. So where the tissue was crushed up under, like, it's literally black and dying. There's no blood supply, so it's starting to die. Part of it healed, but the part that's dying, I'm going to have to redo. I don't know. I don't know. So we got to do something. We ain't going to give up, OK? I was worried about more tissue dying, and it has. So it caused my suture line to fail because dead stuff don't heal. I mean, I'm kind of at a dead end here because I got to somehow get this to hold and get that good tissue to hang in there with me. How am I going to close this wound? Look at that. All that tissue is dead. Gosh. You don't even feel it. Just dead, man. Dr. Hodges is working on a plan to save Shay the Australian Shepherd's lip and life. I'm literally going to try to pull a rabbit out of a hat. To save Shay's life, I got to think out of the box. I'm always reading about different tactics. And my visit to Fort Valley State University actually made me think. I'm going to try a trick and see if I can get that area to hold using tilapia skin. Tilapia has been used in many, many types of experimental approaches as far as skin grass. So I made a call down there and I was like, I definitely could use some fresh tilapia in my bag of tricks. And they weren't the ones that were sick. You know how to lay fish? Do I know how to skin it? No. <laughs> I know how to eat it. First thing you have to do is harvest your skins and get them cleaned up. So just keep rubbing it and it'll, oh, OK. Yeah. Tilapia skin provides collagen and elasticity, as well as properties that stop pain. It's experimental, and it's not done much in veterinary medicine. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I think it's Shay's only hope. All right, let's go to work. Just the Hail Mary. If this don't work, I'm going to euthanize this dog. Oh, this is nasty. It's super infectious. It's seeping. you got dead tissue that I'm going to deprive. Put it back together then hope it holds to the jaw, then put my suture bandage of fish skin to bring collagens and all the different things we have. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it's got to be the perfect storm. Everything has to work. All right. Go ahead and put your tilapia skins right here. Let's go for it. It's going to work. All right, I'll try this piece here. Did you teach all this in vet school, dog? Uh, no, they did not. I read about it. They do this with people all the time. If you think of it, it's almost like baking a cake. So I'm bringing the jaw together, and I'm baking my cake. Tilafia serves as my icing, but it's the icing that makes it look great. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Part fish, part dog. What you call that? Doggish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That is awesome, man. We'll see. We ain't gonna see it gonna work. We ain't gonna see it gonna work. Sometimes it's good to have some assurance that you're doing it right. You just need a chili to be like rah, rah, rah. Right, right, right. So it's always great. It's doggish now. <laughs> it's beautiful and doggish. For sure. And you a good chili. Thank you, man. Hoping this holds. I'm hoping I get a seal. I try to bring all the blood supply I can. Not perfect by any means, but got no choice. I guess it's gonna have to do. Oh, I'm good, though. Surgery's done. You know, this fish may feel a little weird with a little tightness, but I mean, consider his jaw is hanging almost off. I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is definitely feeling better, but I need it to stay. My ideal thing would be for this to start granulating and healing while my fish skin dries and forms a scab on top so nothing can penetrate in. We have the protection, and hopefully we do fine. Time will tell. All right, on the road again. The team is heading to Nicole's animal rescue farm to treat some ferocious new arrivals. Who's ready to get bit by alligator? Polly. <laughs> 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 what about the most important question? And what's the most important question? How big is it? <laughs> that, that's for you. You let us know. I'm going to be the one who lives to tell the story. <laughs> hey, Nicole, what's Hi, going guys. on? What's up? How you doing today? Great. 
Dr. Hodges and Dr. Ferguson are coming out to check out my rescue alligators. I got three. Wimpy is my eight footer, Godzilla, and my alligator road rash that I'm mainly concerned about has a bad back left leg. So I'm asking them if it's fixable or not. The big question is, <laughs> what's the plan on getting them out? We have to take each out individually. OK. And then I'm going to have you guys hold them. Whoa. What are we going to do with this? This is it? Yep. <laughs> well, at least mine is bigger than yours. Let's go. <laughs> that don't make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> this little ice will tape you had in the third grade to do your, your project. Well, see, I had a larger take because she knew I was going to be the most courageous one to go and take care of the mouth. You Nowhere in my veterinary <laughs> application process did they say I'm going to go move some alligators out of pen because I'm kind of bite sized. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured with you, at least they take two bites. <laughs> <laughs> this one is Godzilla. Godzilla. You got your tape ready, buddy? I'm good to go. That rope is going to come off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'm just going to get him. All right. See his injury back here? I saw it. It was filled with maggots, and I can smell an infection. Hopefully, we can fix him up so he can be released. Dr. Ferguson, if you want to spot his tail, because... Oh, yeah. He's a big boy. Well, any idea what happened to him? This one was near a neighborhood. Uh-huh. Probably fencing, maybe, climbing underneath the fences. All right, so. We definitely got a nice wound. Pretty deep down here, so we're going to start some antibiotics. We're going to clean this thing out. It's got one area up front look like an abscess. Was that open initially? Yes, sir. Some cream on this one. It'll get smaller and smaller, the area that you put the ointment in. You're almost done, bud. So do you think that I'll be able to release this yeah, one? Yeah, I think this will be fine sure. to, to release. So it may take at least two or three weeks. All right. About to get antibiotics on board, and you will be good to go. Good job, Godzilla. Can y'all make alligator noises? I don't know, can we? No. <laughs> that didn't sound good? <laughs> that was more snakeish, huh? There you, you go. You will not catch any alligators in your future. So what's the gator call? Like, ow, ow, ow. Oh, we was all over. That's we... a baby alligator. So when you make a baby gator call, they all come. OK. <laughs> good job. All right, let's all right. get you ready? wimpy. All right. This big one that we're fixing to get out, she rolls. She does the death roll and she's almost eight feet. But if she rolls it, we'll take us. Okay. It'll take all three. When the cold gives a warning, we better take heed of it. It's death roll stuff. <laughs> so the alligator, it just start rolling. And it start rolling. Once it start rolling, it's going to be pretty difficult to restrain yes, at that point. I don't want to be an internet sensation. Let's hope that's not the case. Just before we go in, I want to tell you something, brother. I love you, man. I don't love you back. Thank you. Let's make it happen. All right. Hey, wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. <laughs> Wimpy doesn't look so wimpy, though. There you go. Ow, ow, ow. I think it's working. Come on, Wimpy. Ow, 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 ow. All right. Oh, all right, all right. Hold That's on, all right. Way. Keep her head that way. Oh, let's go. No, 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 no. The docs are at Nicole's farm to give medical attention to some very unwilling candidates. All right. I'll take your All right. head. Oh, I sure will. It's a strong animal, my friend. So. <laughs> You'll wrap your hand here. You got it. She's heavy, isn't she? Oh, I got her. All right, y'all got him. We saw that death row. We don't want that to happen again. At all. All right, let's go. Yeah, I know y'all came to work out today, didn't you? No damn bro. Ow, I got my end, boss. You got to exam this time I'm holding the baby. All right. We got some abrasions on the Now, hood. she got um, two missing teeth that she broke out. OK. I don't know if it needs anything else, but smell her breath. See if it's infected. Oh. <laughs> is it yummy? Not too bad. Is that you or is that the alligator? <laughs> <laughs> it depends. It is sweet. It is sweet as me. Um, you sure? I don't think you should be joking me while I'm holding the alligator and keeping you protected, man. Fair enough. You do smell better than the alligator. <laughs> It looks good. We got some superficial abrasions. I'm just going to give an antibiotic injection. All right, Wimpy. We'll go ahead and let her heal. And then she should be ready to go back into the wild. Now we have the one that I'm worried about. All right. All right. Road All right. Road Ruff has a bad foot. Which leg is it? I want to see a little funk. This one right here. Left rear? Yes, sir. I'm hoping not a fracture. Oh, yeah, that would be horrible. I know. This leg is much bigger than the other. Yeah, it's a lot larger, so something's so, going on there. Alligator with a fractured leg is going to be in a whole lot of trouble. Alligator that can't run yeah. is in bad shape. Hey, so I'm really good to eat and get prey. What you feel about that, boss man? What, Definitely what? more swelling here. I just want to kind of see what kind of neurological response we get. All right. 
Yeah, he got no, he got deep pain. So, All right. So he All right. got deep pain. He has deep pain? Yeah, it does have deep pain. That's good news. That is great news. I'm kind of pinching to see if there's any kind of deep pain. And we do have quite a bit here. We start to move here, not so much. I'm getting deep pain in some areas, but I'm not really getting much deep pain in the others. So I'm really concerned. You know, a lot of times that tells me that we have an injury. The nerve is not functioning with the muscle, and we're not able to move this leg. And in that case, We'll just drag it. It's worse Bad than outcome. even a fracture. I think we have, as comparing the two, yeah. is a fracture. There's movement like a fresh fracture, but there's more bone development here. So I think that there's a lot of swelling, right. pressure on the nerve that's causing the nerve deficit. And when we can get that to subside, then we regain function. If it's a fracture, is it fixable? One thing we talk about in veterinary medicine, if we can get bones to touch, they'll heal. But we have to make sure that we don't keep pushing on it. Though. Because the more the bearing of the weight, the better chance of this thing not healing. We can try confinement in a smaller area so we don't have to move and place on it. OK, we will do. So we'll be building an enclosure. So road rash can have a very minimum amount of room and still have water. I'm actually hopeful that this is going to work. So. We'll see. We'll see if it heals. All right, thanks, guys. You got a snake bite that's in route? Yep, right here. You got a lead in your pocket? Dr. Ferguson receives an emergency case of a German shepherd bitten by a snake. How long ago he got bit? Uh, 30 minutes ago, probably. Okay. All right. Come on, it was a copperhead, I'm pretty sure, if that helps. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get her inside. All right. You can come on in, sir. The copperhead is one of six venomous snake species found in Georgia. Its bite can be deadly. Here we go. Right. We got a dog bit by a snake. We think it's a copperhead. Let's get a can of venom on board. All right. It's all right. Can y'all send me Paul, please? <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. It's all right, sweetie. All right. Hey, hey, hey. It's all right. Venom caused a lot of swelling, a lot of inflammation. But overall, it caused issues with bleeding internally. These guys can either bleed to death or neurologically they have issues, and it can result in paralysis and death. What you need, Doc? We need one of y'all to hold up so we can try to kill a catheter in, because you pretty fractious. OK. Give me some antivenom yeah, so right. we can get on board. All right. Snake bites can be time sensitive, because we only have a small window that we can give antivenom, and it's going to work for it. So we need to get this antivenom on board right away. I heard her outside kind of like jumping around, and I yeah. walked outside and saw it curled up. You know, already been bitten by then? I guess so, yeah. Grabbed her up and put her yeah. inside the house. When they get this toxin, they'll start vomiting. They may diarrhea, all these are different signs. Hopefully, we got the baby in in time to get this antivenom in there. And see, it doesn't take long for that swelling to start there. We'll get your stuff ready, boss. I appreciate it, man. What the antivenom does, it kind of binds to the venom, and it basically eliminates it from the body. All right, here we go, girl. It's OK. It's OK, sweetie. It's OK. It's all right. It's important that the dog stays calm, because there are things we need to do. We need to get a catheter in. We need to get medication on board. And it makes it a lot more difficult when you have an anxious dog. All right. Roll there. I got to get you to calm down. Calm down. It's all right. It's all right. The critter fixers are on a race against time to treat Layla, the German Shepherd's poisonous snake bite. And venom is right here behind you, boss. We're ready to go. Appreciate it, bro. All right. Good luck, bro. It's okay. It's very rare for animals bitten and it's venom injected that it's going to survive if it's a venomous snake. So we need to get this anti venom on board. It's all right, baby. Good job, guys. All right, let's get an heart rate. She's usually pretty anxious like this. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she's pretty um, excited yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. She's like two and a half, so okay. I'm still like still really a little puppy. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna get you all right, baby. Adult snakes sometimes just do like a dry, dry bite, yeah. right? That's not a dry bite. <laughs> oh no, no, no! It, it's causing some issues there, and you know it's swollen pretty good though. So you want just want to play, didn't you? That's all you want to do is just play with the snake, didn't you? Got to let this stuff work in magic. So we've given the antivenom. This venom could be inside, causing a whole lot of damage. It's a wait and see now. Hopefully, the antivenom works for us. We gave him some anti-inflammatory to help with his swelling, and we got the antivenom. So it's now just kind of wait and watch kind of thing, OK? What's their odds of being um, OK? Right now, I'm feeling OK about it, because he got her in pretty quick. But we're not out of the woods yet. Okay. Yes, sir. What's up? 
Every day I would come to work and the first thing I would do is make a beeline to Shay's cage because I wanted to see if this tilapia skin graft on Shay's jaw was actually holding. Let's see what you're looking like this morning. So it's forming a good tight seal. I just need you to stay in place. A fish seal seems to be working. I see red tissue, which is good. Oh man, look at that. My fish is still holding here. It might hold, fella. Jay, you are a whole different dog. That bandage will eventually fall off. It's just amazing her temperament. I mean, look at her. I hope this slap your skin work. Let's see. Man, that healed up nice. Wow. Our fish did its job. Look at that jawline. It has come back. We can see the teeth. It doesn't hurt. That is nice and pink and holding very well. You're a great plastic surgeon. Wow. <laughs> I'm ecstatic. So I feel like I can sense Shay home today. And it looked like the tilapia did his trick. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> You're a dog part fish now, right? Hey, Shay. That tilapia helped save this dog's life. Sometimes you just gotta be pretty. That is what we want, so we good. All right. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God, thank you. You were the best. Such a relief and such joy that she's going home. I'm so grateful for Dr. Hodges, all he did, it's unbelievable. Gonna definitely cherish every moment. Y'all good to go. Thank you. Love you so Love much. Love y'all too. All right. No problem. See y'all later. Isn't that amazing, Paul? I'm telling you. So after weeks of hoping that I can make Shay better, to unite Shay with Brenda and to see both of them playing, it makes it all worth it. It's why I became a veterinarian and why I actually think this is the greatest profession in the world. It just is an amazing experience. Let's go home. Yay! Say you're free. Get a leash. Well, at least the snake bite is busting out of here. I know you're busting out this joint. Look at you. You're looking good. No, not yet. She said I'm ready. Licking. Your face is going down. That was a close call. Layla, and she's doing much better. All the swelling in the face is going down. She seems to have an appetite. So it seems like those fluids and antivenom work great. You busting out a hotel, couldn't fix it. Let's get you on home. You're looking real good. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Looking good. Did you ever find a snake? I never found it, no. It's just the little copperheads that are worse. And they are mean. They don't back down. The big ones are usually try to slit away. I lived out the country for like two years and yeah. she never got bit. And now that I moved here to the city, now she yeah, got she bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that's Georgia's. See you later, bro. Thank you. All right, bye, Layla. Come on, Layla. Layla's is really, really lucky. I'm glad that her owner saw it. We're able to get her in in the nick of time. Everything is going to be fine. Just keep her away from those snakes. It's all right, buddy. You hear some a little bit. Nicole arrives with Road Rash the alligator to find out if his leg has been healing. Let's see what we got on the train. That actually looks better. I mean, looking at the bone, the swelling's down. Yeah, it looks a lot better. I mean, much better. I want to see how you walk. Where are you taking my baby? Uh, I'm finna go see. I want to see what he do in the grass. I want to see how he plants and walk. Oh, yeah. Him back again, oh, yeah. That looks good. Well, you can tell it's a lot less swelling oh, than yeah. it was on last time. Much better. That's sweet. That's what I wanted to see. Oh, man. Take this alligator out, put him on the ground, and he plants. Hey, I see him. Hey, it's doing good. I mean, no more dragging. He's actually walking around. I, I don't know if I've ever been happier to yeah. see an alligator walk. Nicole. Yes? I took him outside. It looks great. He is literally planting on that. He's Yay. doing very well. Good news. That's awesome. So I said, let's That's let him awesome. keep him cage rest another couple months. He'd be ready to go. Thank you so much. That's good news. Dr. Hodges showed me that Road Rash's leg is improving. It's really good news. I love having the alligators, but it's so much better for them to be able to live in the wild. So I'm going to keep doing what he said, and we're on the right track. See y'all later. See y'all later. Nicole keeping this alligator confined and actually just letting Mother Nature do her job. Yeah. Man, this leg is healed. I'm super excited. I mean, it's amazing. Okay.